What's up, Foot Clan? In today's episode, we go through some trending or ending, some things that were happening last year. Will those things continue? And we break down Robbie Anderson's dynasty value. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. It's combine time. Hey, hey. That was combine. That's right. Okay. Get hyped for the combine, baby. Because it's combine time. It's easier to be hyped for combine time than CBA time. That is true. Right? Negotiation time (laughs) doesn't. Doesn't do it. Doesn't legal, flow off. Legal paperwork time. <laughs> Excited to be with everybody. Welcome back in the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, back with you. It's February 25th. We have been following the CBA. Mm-hmm. I believe we're all pro football. You're pro football. I'm pro football. Mike. I'm pro them playing football. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Brooks, you pro football? Yes. Yeah, I am too. So I didn't even realize we had that so in much common, in common. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we'll see what happens. This show's coming out on Tuesday. That's Is that their go-to in the negotiation strategies? So we'll see what happens? Like, no, the hate players. Oh. We like football. You guys like football. Let's play football. should sign this thing. Hey. 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 Let's get it done. There's a bit of money involved, Come Mike. On. It's yeah. a profitable venture, football, this so football thing. So we'll see what happens. Maybe there's some news that has come out between recording this and Tuesday morning. But the last I heard is that there was potential for a vote Tuesday afternoon. We'll see what happens. I could be wrong, but I'm optimistic. I hope something gets done here soon, and we know that we've got another, what, 10 years for it will of be a, labor peace? It will be a new 10-year contract, but it will take away the current year, so it will add nine to what is currently happening. And no matter what, even if it doesn't happen and they Table storm it. out of the room in a very childish manner, it doesn't <laughs> matter. We're still, we still got football next year. This is for 2021. Yeah, we're just pl- paying close attention. You can follow the show, the Fantasy Footballers, over on Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers, YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. Make sure you subscribe. Click the bell. I can tell you this right now. We're going to have a 2019 highlight video up on the YouTube very, very soon. Oh, really? <laughs> Did you know that, Mike? I heard some whispers yeah. from the bushes. Yeah. But I didn't know it was really happening. Yeah, we had a few highlights last year. One or two. Some low lights. Plenty some, of those. Some medium lights. Yeah. We also went through all of last year's shows and took out all those low lights. So we <laughs> hard edits, everything that we had. No, we should have a new video up there, so check that out on YouTube. And a reminder, you have until March 1st to get that sweet Ultimate Draft Kit pre-sale bonus time. Uh, the Ultimate Draft Kit, as you know, this is the number one tool for getting primed and ready for your upcoming drafts. If you Pre-buy it, you get it at the earliest price. You get some some bonuses, and if you do it before March 1st, you get a shot at being a member of the 2020 Listener League. Very prestigious. Yeah. Like, think about it. I mean, think about how many people have, like, been in space, and then think about how many people have been in the Fantasy Footballers wow, Listener League. have there been more people in space than so who have I been a part of our Listener so. League? <laughs> Certainly in space, yes. If you had said on the moon, you would have. We would have really. Yeah, I didn't say had that. to think about that. That's why I made sure I did not say that. Yeah, and uh, you could be like Brooks. We found Brooks through the listener league. <laughs> yes, yes. Be like Brooks. <laughs> be like Brooks. Have you been to space, Brooks? Nope. See, there, I, not I, I yet. Know, I don't know what that proves. Let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. All right, this is a great one. Right now in a dynasty league, are you buying or selling Robbie Anderson? Mm. Free agent wide receiver. Man of much hype. Years gone by. 
Robbie Anderson in a dynasty league, though. We've talked at length about landing in a new home as a wide receiver. It's tough. It can be. It's it's tough, but we've also, in recent history, seen players who escape from Adam Gaze and his offensive system all of a sudden start to thrive. Guys that we had kind of written off as they, they they'll be nobodies in the NFL. Move along. And then you're like, oh, no, actually, they're they're just being used improperly. Yeah, and he is a free agent right now. Yeah. The expectation is that he will not be a Jet because he has set his heart on testing free agency. Well, they've already and replaced him. I was going to say the same thing, <laughs> Mike. No, sorry. No, yeah, we, all, we all were going there. They signed Josh Doxson, so they good. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, he uh. is – Robbie Anderson is, you could argue, could be the second biggest name – in free agency at the wide receiver position. You've got Amari Cooper, who, if he leaves Dallas, uh, obviously he would be the uh, the gym uh, of the wide receiver pool. But outside of that, I mean, you you're AJ talking about... Green. Sure, A.J. Green, older, right. missed last year. Like Some people obviously might like that. But Robbie Anderson's 26 years old. He'll be 27 this AJ season. A.J. Green is by far a bigger catch in free agency than Robbie Anderson. My is. point is he's going to get paid. Tyrell Williams last year got paid. I mean, That's why he won't be a Jet. I think they'd be happy to have him back. Darnold could use Robbie Anderson and all of his talents. It's just going to be the money problem. I also, do you really think Robbie wants to go back to the Jets or would he rather go to a new team? I think he, he wants to get paid. Maybe he just wants the money. Yeah. That's it. Look, that's, that's also a very fair thing. But he, look, he's 6'3, he has 4'4 four, four speed. If he lands in the right place, then it's. He, he will be very interesting next year again. I know I, we, we all – and I'll, I'll speak just for myself. I like keep going in on Robbie Anderson, and it, it blows up in my face. But I still think he's an ex exciting player, still young enough, and uh, if if I have to buy or sell him in Dynasty, I would be buying him if that's my choices. He's available. I have him so if you're interested. I will be selling him. Um, I, I believe that we have seen uh, enough history of flashes where he will get paid. I would not be selling him right now. Do not sell him until he signs the big contract because he's about to sign a big money contract and that will always, I mean, we just have too much evidence over the years. When someone goes somewhere for a new big contract, their value in fantasy leagues gets usually overinflated. And so I am more of a seller because I don't believe that he changing teams, going to a new system, new quarterback, whatever, will definitely work out. I think there's a chance it just implodes. We've never really seen him put together the entirety of a season that we were thrilled with. He's just right. had short spurts of promise. And so him changing teams, you know, one of the things you wanted to remember, uh, Mike, this year was that when, when guys change in free agency, it doesn't always work out. Most of the time it doesn't. Well, one of the caveats I at least had when Mike brought that up, though, was that I have less confidence in a player, a good player, going to a new team and somehow leveling up because of all the hype around the transaction and the move. Brandon Cooks to the Patriots, that type of situation. Right. But with Robbie, you're right. I mean, he's going to get paid money. He's going to make more than $10 million a year. Yes. And that's going to be a huge investment for another team. So depending on where he lands, you know, the talk of Philadelphia. That seems like one of those places that looks on paper like a great fit. It would, it, it would be a big upgrade for Robbie Anderson. Like, Robbie Anderson has not played in the most optimal of situations with quarterbacks. 114 targets, 63 receptions. 94 targets, 50 receptions. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a field stretcher. So I, his, his catch percentage isn't going to be up in the 70%. But part of that, I was trying to add to your, your fuel, maybe that's on him. But oh, it's more sure. about the quarterback throwing him the ball there. Now, Brooks, these dynasty trade offers, where did, we, where did we get this list of possibilities? I uh, pulled up some uh, rankings for 2020 dynasty okay. rankings and players that were close to that. All right, so Jason, you are – the seller of Robbie Anderson. I think yes. I am too, by the way. Okay. I didn't weigh in officially, but I think I agree with Jason that I would wait for him to sign because there is a little bit of the off the field history. So if you combine some hype bit, with yeah. that risk in dynasty, I think I'd be selling too. Okay. So if I came to you and I said, I will give you a 2020 late second round pick. No, no. Give me Robbie. Get out. Yeah, the, a late second is, you know, I feel like 
I look at that as you've got a solid 30% chance of getting a, a player who can make it in the NFL. Philip Lindsay. Yeah, I mean, if I needed running back help, I think I would. Uh, fair trade? Yeah, fair fair trade. Darius Geis. Uh, no. I, I, Give me Robbie. I'm I'm so hesitant on Geis in general. All right, Kareem Hunt. Well, since we're going to wait until Robbie Anderson signs someplace to sell, if Kareem Hunt were to be signed someplace that makes him a starter, I would definitely uh, trade him for Kareem Hunt. So but what if he's back with the Browns? No. Because he's, not, he's not the starter there. Okay. He's he's an okay running back option. He'll be, you know, a, you could put him in your flex, but he's behind Chubb. Okay. That was Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Check him out, pristineauction.com. Use the code Ballers, ballers. Get ten dollars towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Clearly, no bigger news than the news we just couldn't help but drop earlier. Josh mm. Doxson, yeah, signed with the Jets. He Always a good sign when you're signed before free agency really officially begins because you didn't have a team, right? That. That's a big signing. Look, they wanted Josh Doxson. And they That's the narrative. Just, <laughs> Josh, please pull a Devontae Parker. <laughs> please. Uh, He's not going to, but uh, I can dream. All right, you, you sang it at the beginning. It's combine time. What's yes. going on with the combine? It's combine time. What do you mean what's going the, on? Oh, I mean like the schedule. What do we got going on? So Thursday will be the quarterbacks, wide receivers, and tight ends doing their drills, and Friday will be the running backs. That's kind of the the fun, interesting things where you can go and you can get hyped about how fast people actually are. What the the measurements that's already happening. We, we're already seeing how big guys actually are. People are already freaking out about the size of Joe Burrow's hands. Oh which, my goodness! Which, don't I love it? Don't worry. No, about no, it. no, Mike. You don't understand. He has nine inch hands, and that's and really small. And that's really small, but Patrick Mahomes has nine and a, a quarter. That's totally – that's cool. Huge. That's, fine. that's cool. So, and people always ask, what, what are you looking for in the, in the combine? I mean, for when it comes to the, the, the metrics and the measurables of, of on-the-field stuff, like, yeah, I want to I see Saquon Barkley's. I want to see the DK Metcalfs go out there and just blow up the high score and be like, holy crap, and get really interested in these players and, and build the hype because it's fun. But I like seeing how big guys actually are. Is that, like, that makes a really big difference where – The weight. The, yeah, the, the height and the weight where a running back – you're I'm really interested in running back X. They come in, they weigh in, they're only 200 pounds. Uh, that's, that's a little bit smaller, generally speaking, than I want my running back to be but if I'm going to make a high rookie pick investment – are you thinking about players? Ronald Jones right now? Is that what you're thinking about? No, I mean, from it, years past. It, it, sure, he was a bit smaller, but it, it doesn't it doesn't always come to fruition. Like Devin Singletary was a smaller guy, and he also kind of stunk at the measurables. But Devin Singletary right now looks like he is an excellent dynasty prospect. He looks like he's going to make it as a running back. So it's make sure you're you're filtering everything through. Not not rose colored glasses. What would the opposite of rose colored glasses be? Poop colored glasses. <laughs> well, don't I don't want you to do that. I I'm want just you to have saying, fun. That's what it would be. Like, the enjoy opposite the... of a rose is poop. Well, yeah. I mean, you got like the the red, the pretty. Roses or you got really the brown. smell like hoo hoo hoo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, I'm you know I, I I say this every year. The thing that I enjoy watching the most is the running back pass catching drills I want to see how smooth they are at catching because when when they're doing the, the the gauntlet you can really tell the difference between someone who catches it smooth and stride thoughtless and those who just have that little hitch that little giddy up that like I got a concentration pause. hitch absolutely like, yeah. I can do this because outside of I gotta believe outside of things like that and those unfortunately for a lot of people those aren't measurable Right. right, like I can't go and look at they the score. They call it the Jordan Howard hitch. <laughs> the mm. the score that someone got on their uh, gauntlet drill, but most measurables are overblown. I mean, you, there's certain thresholds you want to hit just to be a quality NFL player. But you know, you look at Dalvin Cook. How was his combine? It was right. It was horrific. Rough. And you know, I'm I'm also really excited to see Henry Ruggs. I want to see if he can beat the fastest man the alive score. score. Yeah, that's just fun. Yeah, I mean, the NFL is catching up on what. We've brought up before, not us specifically, but we, the community, of overemphasizing some of the measurable stuff 
Yes, it's great to validate that Saquon is a freak. That kind of stuff is great. But Dalvin Cook's a great example of you have a lot to lose at the combine potentially as a high-tier prospect coming out of college. And NFL teams are catching up. Vic Fangio, he's showing up, but he's not keeping – he's not sending his scouts along. Sean McVay's doing the same thing. They believe that their time and effort might be better appropriated elsewhere. It's actually like watching the guys play football. Right. I, we've always <laughs> joked about the, the 40. I, I like the 40. It's fun. It's entertaining. It's fun to watch. Give me one with pads on. Yes, with a ball in your hand. And here's why. Now, stay with me because I think they play in pads on Sunday. Yeah, just mm. so that's where they will actually mm. be running. Yeah, Dalvin Cook is fast. well. Look, they're planning for the just the extreme situation. Let's say a guy is running; he gets hit so hard, his pads just it's, bl they blow off his yeah. body. Now you know how fast he is. But then he gets to keep running. Right? After he, that. Somehow he, he didn't get tackled. Landed just, on his feet. Like, did you ever? Did you ever play uh, uh, like Ghosts and Goblins? Back oh, on the old that NES. That was so hard. I mean, you would get hit and your armor would just explode off and you got way faster. I mean, that's, that's, that was a great reference, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. I don't remember that at all. Oh, man. It's too bad. You said NES Classic? It was. There was also one on the Super. I oh, think the okay. Super was Ghouls and Goblins. The NFL needs the Combine to still be a big deal for the kind of... It's fun, man. That's, that's what I'm trying to say is it's fun, but measure yourself. Don't freak out over what's going to happen because we will do the freaking out for we you. Will I'll be here. Bring in all of the hype. hyped. Yeah. We'll be here to tell you that Metcalf can't run rounds, right? Is that our – Yeah. You, you that's know, the kind of stuff that comes out of the combine measurables. Yeah. It is, it is ironic because, you know, there are certain positions where there are sticky stats that are telling for – uh, the success of NFL players, but usually that's like the offensive line, a defensive line for fantasy purposes. All the skill players, uh, I think we're better off with uh, tape and production rather than uh, athletic measurables. Yeah, the media hype around the combine just makes the combine more important than it probably is for scouts anymore, but it's still important. It's not right. unimportant. All right, what else is going on? We talked about the CBA vote likely happening. No real big updates there. We'll talk all about it if it goes through. Jarvis Landry expected to be sidelined six to eight months. He had hip surgery. We'll talk we're, about him in just a minute. Yeah, and we're doing some trending or ending That's right. on the show today. So expected to make a full recovery for the 2020 season. But we'll talk about whether we believe that means production yeah, is well, coming your way. I don't know. The timelines are a little fuzzy. The way math adds up? Yes. Six to eight <laughs> months mixed with when the season would begin? Right. Okay. Danny Amendola coming back one year deal with the Detroit Lions. Mm. Health meter, it's it over it fills back up over the oh, offseason. Oh man, we didn't get the drop. We have a drop for Danny Amendola. We have a mediocre signing of oh, the week. Oh stop! I, I mean, don't think he deserves that. Oh absolutely, Danny Amendola deserves that. I I'm a Danny Amendola fan. I think he's good. He's fine. He's you know what I would say? He's mediocre. I tried to I tried to give you enough time there. <laughs> they, they, there's no drop, All right. or if there is, I missed it. But here's here's the thing with Amendola is I'd rather him be on my team than not at this stage in his career. He's not a headline guy. No, and for goodness sakes, if you tell me to play him in fantasy, you're gonna have a hard time picking. Now, him, speaking picking of weight. pads, like they should give that guy like a extra. extra. Yeah. He extra should pads. be wearing the 1970s NFL uniform. <laughs> you know, the just the the super big shoulder <laughs> yes. pads. Are those, that's probably still legal, right? Oh, probably, I hope so. I, if one guy out there was just in these absurd pads, <laughs> that would be so fun. He would be my favorite player. When you have an undersized offensive line, that's the solution. They'll look yeah. a little bit more intimidating. All right, we're going to get into trending or ending. But first, I want to thank Simply Safe for sponsoring today's show. Look, with home security, there are two ways you can go about protecting your home. You got that traditional way. You wait for a technician. You sign a long contract. It costs you a small fortune. Boo. Not good, right? Boo. There's another way, and it's Simply Safe. We've been using Simply Safe here at Foot Clan headquarters for quite some time, well before they were a sponsor. It's award winning protection, it's everything you need in a security system. They're the two time winner of the CNET Editor's Choice Award. We haven't even won that. It's ridiculous. Yes. Yes. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. <laughs> and uh, it's easy to install. Anyone can do it. It takes 30 minutes, an hour tops. 
There are no trade-offs for your safety, and uh, that's why The Verge called Simply Safe, Simply Safe, the best home security system. Check it out today at simplysafe.com slash footballers. Get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial at simplysafe.com slash footballers. S-I-M-P-L-I safe.com slash footballers. If these trends continue, hey. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, the the, the offseason is when the, is when the classics come out. I, th- I think I poo pooed you last week on one you of these. You did. Offs. That was fire. All right. You, de- you definitely did. Yeah. Well, yeah. I remember. I was there. <laughs> Trending or ending? Another memory from last week is coming into my head, though. And I don't know. I, I guess I'm going to bring it up. Please do. How's your hand? Oh. How's your hamstring? Oh. How's your hamstring? Oh, man. It is It is fine now. It wasn't uh, last week. I had a unexpected Charlie horse whilst sitting. Uh, <laughs> not your first sitting injury. No. Won't not, be your my sec- last. not your second sitting it's, injury. It's your third recorded <laughs> sitting injury. Right. Injured. The third since that they YouTube- started tracking that <laughs> yeah, stat, right? It was my third seated leg injury <laughs> while being in the room with both Mike and Andy in this past year. That's the the qualifiers, but and you're recovering. I'm total fully made a full recovery, okay. but in the moment, and we've got to get this video out there because you won't believe it. You won't. You won't, you won't believe it. You'll say. I don't believe it. It's <laughs> That's the, what you're gonna say because it's it's abs- my reaction. You're, it was disturbing to the point where I thought <laughs> I, genuinely, Jason. I thought for sure you were having some sort of heart attack or seizure event. It was a full grand mall. Like if you listen to me, I was <laughs> like, I was basically, are you okay? Do we need to chest compressions? What do we need here? You won't see for any, a hammy injury. You won't for a seated hammy injury. You won't see anything funnier. This year, okay, Footclan. When we when we put the we should put it wherever uh, YouTube. Yeah, uh, there, there's a gif. I've already made one. It is the most ridiculous thing you'll see. I want to stress that Jason is 100 percent okay because when you see this without context, you will think this man is dying. But we'll get back to uh, at the FF Ballers on Twitter. <laughs> Al Borland can figure it out. Trending or ending? You brought up Jarvis Landry's name before. Will Jarvis Landry finish as a top 20 wide receiver again? Hmm. So wide receiver 13 in 2019, uh, mostly because he he emerged as the the Cleveland Browns' number one wide receiver, tied for the wide receiver seven in fantasy points from weeks 9 through 17, despite Odell Beckham Jr. being there, who Odell Beckham also – he had his own surgery, right? That is correct. He had a core surgery. Yeah, both guys are... They're upgrading him to the Pentium. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Very thank, nice. Thank you. <laughs> a Pentium reference. Oh, man, that core processor. So, Jarvis Landry, it's it's really hard to bet against Jarvis Landry. I mean, he's just he's been super consistent. He's been uh, not, not so much a stud for fantasy football, but he's just been a reliable guy because he's he's reliable in the nfl he's reliable for fantasy football especially in a ppr situation i am concerned though about the surgery like if 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 he is not ready to play until two weeks before the season starts that's not going to be surprising yeah so here's i I looked into the the injury the surgery the recovery timeline all that we've heard the six to eight months the the procedure seems to be relatively simple. Uh, the the timeline is that six to eight month. You know, it's it it takes a while to recover, but that should or at least could put him available in training camp. And if you remember, this injury happened last off season. He missed the off season program, and he doesn't miss games. He's a tough guy. He left this season saying that he was not going to have the surgery. Had the three weeks after the season, met with the team doctors. They were going to find a a method to just manage the pain. But then he played in the Pro Bowl three weeks afterwards. And during that time, 
even though he was just jogging and, you know, you're not going all out at the Pro Bowl. He was like, there was a lot of pain. He reevaluated, decided to have the surgery. But he does he just doesn't – Jarvis doesn't miss games. That's why, you know, you look at the last five years, wide receiver 13, 14, 7, 19, and 13. Two different teams, a bunch of different quarterbacks. So I'm, I'm going to – I'm going to say that if he is there at training camp, I am going to be in on Jarvis Landry continuing the trend. I think he's a phenomenal wide receiver in real life. He's been good for fantasy, and that hasn't been on the back of double-digit touchdown seasons that are very volatile. So I'm going to buy it. However, I'm still going to stick with my don't buy the injury dip. So should he be injured too long into training camp and his draft stock drop, I'm – I'm going to let it you drop past sh Shark Tank. Yeah, but if he's there for training camp, I, I buy that he will continue the trend of being the number one wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns. You going to draft that way? No. <laughs> well, I mean, I would I would draft that way. Jason's ADP, already said he's probably not drafting Beckham. Yeah, ADP uh, would be that way. I'll bet my rankings are that way. You bet your rankings. That They'll be close if not if not that way, but I, I would not buy Odell Beckham at whatever his – ADP would be, and I would buy Jarvis Landry at what his ADP would be, so long as he's there for training camp, which the timeline does allow. Did we ever go through any of those like end of season water bets, like those year long bets that we would make? Because like I, it was like tempting. the really funny ones that we make right around now. That yeah, the, the one that I was super season. tempted to be yeah. like giving you the OBJ versus Landry thing, but it's not even really fair because of injury. And mm. did we ever go through those, Brooks? No, did you ever look at him? He's shaking his head. No, I have not. They they exist. I know we made those bets. Uh, I was this wide receiver thirteen finish. Is that half PPR? Yes. It's kind of shocking to me that you have a season with about six games that you're kind of happy to impress with Jarvis Landry, and that ends up at wide receiver thirteen. It was that feels down, like a bit of a down in, an indictment on all receivers. I was gonna say it was a down year on the wide receiver position, so it didn't take as much to finish where he did this season. Yeah, I'm right on the edge. I think I'm gonna say ending. I think he ends up out, out of the top top 20. All right, let's move on. Ooh. A lot of fantasy football owners want to know, will Super Camario, Alvin Kamara, finish outside the top five running backs again, or does he jump back up? That, what do you think? That spot is very high. Top five says he's you know got to be one of the absolute best, and you had new players breaking in this year, uh, Derrick Henry and Aaron Jones. You've got obviously Christian McCaffrey's there, Zeke, and you know some of the stalwarts. So this is really a question of do you think Alvin Kamara is still one of the elite of the elite or not? Because this past season he was not. I mean, you're on a per game basis, which is I think how you have to look at it since he. Uh, obviously missed some time with that ankle injury. He was still good. He was the running back 10 on a points per game basis, but he was not great. Now, I know my when answer to this. When you go from this, 18 to 6 touchdowns yeah. from year to year, that is tough to overcome. Yeah, so I, I know my answer on whether I buy into Alvin Kamara being outside of that or whether he's still the elite of the elite. So I'd like to hear your guys' arguments. I think he finishes outside the top five again. And I think Ooh. I think that has more to do with the emergence and creativity of both Taysom Hill and then what Jared Cook could do in the offense last year. Both were variables that were not in play with his kind of overabundance of touchdowns in 2018. So do I think Alvin Kamara is a great fantasy running back? Yes. Do I think he finishes outside the top five again? Yes, I do. I'm back. I will be back in on Alvin Kamara I, as, a top, as a top five guy. You talked about Jason, his points per game, where he was, and that's with five rushing touchdowns and only one receiving touchdown, which Kamara had five receiving touchdowns, four receiving touchdowns the, the previous two years. I'll be I'll be back in. Like Drew Brees is back. The Saints offense is still going to be very, very prolific. They're going to be one of the top scorers in the league. I think this was just a, a flukish – a flukish touchdown year for Alvin Kamara on top of the injury problem that he had. So I'll be right back in with Kamara. Yeah, and and I'm I'm with Mike on this one. I I do think that Alvin Kamara is phenomenal. This team is one of the highest scoring teams in the league. 
I think touchdowns will swing to an appropriate area that will push him up there. And one of the things we talked about on the things not to forget um, from last episode is the high ankle sprain where it took some time once he was back to, to get going. Not only that, you also have the Teddy Bridgewater period of time right. where the team you know didn't score as much, wasn't quite as uh, high flying through that stretch. So I believe coming in next year healthy, he's still – a young guy, he doesn't have a ton of work uh, on the legs, and and I believe in the offense. So I will be back in on Alvin Kamara next season. You guys are way off. He's going to be RB. <laughs> he's going to be RB six. RB six. Fair. All right. I'm really excited to talk about these next two trending or ending. The first one is: Can Brandon Cooks return to being a top fifteen fantasy wide receiver? What do we think? Before 2019, he can had been a- he? He had been a top 14 wide receiver the past four seasons. I dug I dug into his contract situation. Obviously, last year was kind of a lost year for Brandon Cooks. But he ain't going anywhere, guys. I don't see any way, shape, or form that he can. If he was leaving, they would need to cut him before March 20th. After March 20th, his, his hit is astronomical. You cut him right now. His dead cap hits $21 million. Yeah, he, If you cut him after March, March 20th, it's $30 million. So I think Brandon Cooks, at his age, with some time, obviously the concussions are a scary thing. But can he return to being a top 15 fantasy wide receiver? What do we think? I definitely think he will not be a top 15 fantasy wide receiver. If you said top 24, I would him and haw, and I would probably mm, say uh, mm. I'd, I'd probably say no. I think that there's a change that ha- has happened to the Rams offense in general. I mean – you, you, the game splits between the concussions. Like his snap percentages before and after are pretty drastic, but that also came with a change. You know, we talk so much about Tyler Higby's involvement right. and him being a, a, a key piece of this offense. I think this offense has adapted and changed. I mean, when you look at Brandon Cooks, I mean, he played 14 games. He, he was out there on the field. It didn't feel like it. You feel like, well, you know, he missed most of the season. He had the concussion problems, finished, you know, his whatever wide receiver, 60-something. But he played the whole year. So I don't see where – I don't see where, okay, now coming into next year, he's going to be a top-flight issue. And that's not to even say the potential injury risk, right? Like, okay, he's got some serious uh, concussion issues, so – the the chance of him finishing outside of this due to injury next year is a little higher. So I I am worried on Cooks. I will be down uh, and buying the trend of what has happened this year going forward. Yeah, I agree with some of the things you said with your mouth. Hmm. Mm. I think top 15 is too ambitious. I think it's fair to make a concession there and say, you know, top 24. That uh, I would buy him top 24 inside that range. He's young. He's still talented. I'm not willing to declare a fundamental transition in the Rams offense when you have Robert Woods, Brandon Cooks, and Cooper Cup, those type of weapons in the passing game. You've talked a lot about the post-high ankle sprain performances of Kamara, Barkley, but Brandon Cooks was dealing with multiple concussions Yes, he formally missed two games. He also informally missed a couple more by snap count. It's going to be something where you have to say, is Brandon Cooks a relevant fantasy football player anymore? Right. And at his age and on that offense, I believe he is. And with his contract. And with his contract. And uh, there are rumors of trading him, you know, teams that want to go out and get him. I've heard New England talk about, bringing him back because of the opportunity to replicate what he did with them when we didn't think we were that impressed, but he was still a top 15 guy on that team with no Julian Edelman helping him out that season. So I just am not willing to throw the talent on Brandon Cooks as a player after one down year. Now, do you make anything of the beginning of the year? Because I'll I'll make the, the, the exception, okay, he had the concussion problems, at the end of the year, and maybe all of a sudden it changes his play. Now he's hesitant. The team is choosing to use him different. But of those first seven games before the concussion game, four of those he was not even a top 40 wide receiver. He had two solid games where he was wide receiver 14, then 16. 
an okay game at wide receiver 20, and that was against Tampa Bay that was just allowing everyone to be uh, an awesome I think there was, fantasy wide receiver. There were some concerns on tape about separation this year that, that played into that, and so that would be a fair concern. He's going to be, what, 27 next year? Yeah. So I guess I'm looking at the four consecutive seasons of 1,100 range production and believing that he can get back there. Last year certainly doesn't do anything to encourage you that way, but we saw him do it with the Rams before, and I believe that top 24 is doable. One, okay. w- yeah, so one of the things with Brandon Cooks is he's such a field stretcher, you know, a down-the-field guy. The offensive line for the Rams sure. being so bad does not a really give good them point. the time to utilize Brandon Cooks, and I think that's why they shifted and said, okay, we're going to need – to have more like tight end across the middle play quick I think you're 100% quick shots right. rather than being able to involve him because it, yes it would be great to throw it to the guy deep down the field but I we don't have the time to do it so I I'm I don't think they're going to completely rectify their offensive line situation so right. yeah and I think that's a, a a pretty good picture of what happened to Brandon Cooks guy that had averaged what 15 plus per reception yeah, he was great. The three previous years, it drops to thirteen point nine last year. Mixing concussions, mixing Jared Goff's up and down play, offensive line play. So maybe we transition our thought on their offense if their offensive line looks better on paper heading into the year. Maybe, yeah. I mean that that would certainly bode better for the down the field guy. Can Mike Gesicki trending or ending that second half pace from twenty nineteen? Is that is that a trend? Are we going to begin? The Gesicki experience. The Miami Dolphins tied in the uh, – talk about a player that got you really, really excited after his combine performance where he, he just breaks every measurable possible. He's an absolute athletic freak. He is it, He is a, a tough case, but, but it, was he a prisoner of Adam Gase where – the Adam Gase regime drafted him into Miami. They spent a, a very high draft capital. Was he a second-round pick? I'm pulling this off the top of my head. But I know they drafted him very early. It is a second-round pick, Mike. Thank you, Brooks. And, I mean, those those first couple of years, you just, you're just you like, wow, Mike Gesicki. Holy cow, this dude is an absolute massive bust. But then <clears throat> Preston Williams goes down. Yeah, from weeks 10 through 17, he's the tight end nine in fantasy points per game. Now, tight end nine is not that, – that doesn't really get you hot and bothered uh, to make it up to the number nine, but it's – was this the emergence? Is this of things that things that could come for Mike Gesicki? Because if he gets the opportunity, he should be able to make the most out of it. And you have reports now coming out uh, from ESPN, Cameron Wolf saying they we expect Mike Gesicki to be used – in the slot, like well, we're going to turn him into a big slot guy, and like, and Chan Gailey is very pass heavy there, right? And that's, I mean, you want to talk the big slot? That's how Jordan Reed was dominant. That's how that's when you see Evan Engram getting open. It's because he's the big dude in the slot, and he's getting featured. How are you feeling, Jason, about Mike Gesicki's uh, pos- the possibility that he takes that and he turns that into Let, a let's like call, a season long performance? Let's call trending a top twelve finish. Yeah, I, I think that's in the. I, I think that's a very likely outcome for Mike Gesicki. I remember when we were scouting his college tape. I was very down on Gesicki because of I thought the way they utilized him. He was coming in so raw, mm-hmm. and he was going to take time to develop into an NFL tight end because the way his college program used him was not in any way, shape, or form how NFL tight ends are are utilized. Well, the opportunity came. You brought up Preston Williams. And so there's a big question of like, well, was he just, you know, was he just in the right time? Right. You know, the splits with and without. He was the pressing. replacement player. There was right. also some Rosen time in there. Yeah, that's true. You know, average six fantasy points a game. Uh, you know, when Preston Williams was out there, eleven and a half. When uh, Preston Williams was gone. But the Dolphins don't have a ton of options or great weapons. So the way that I view this is they now see that they have a special player. They are going to get him involved because it's a really easy path for him. Who's he really got to beat? A Preston Williams coming back off of a bad you know, right. knee injury? However, it's the Miami Dolphins. 
the upside is not going to be there. He's not going to be able to take the Mark Andrews leap because, you know, Mark Andrews, we saw some of the, the, he reminds me so much of Mark Andrews. Really good telling sticky stats at the end of the year that say this guy could be a legit fantasy option. The big difference is we could see the Ravens taking that step forward as an offense with Lamar Jackson. I don't know that the Dolphins are taking some massive step forward in offense next year with either Fitzpatrick or a rookie. So I think a low end tight end one is what Gasicki is right now. And you'll have the Fitzpatrick dilemma all year long. Like Ryan Fitzpatrick, we love him on this show. We love him because he creates fantasy players. He turned Devontae Parker from a four year bust into a breakout, one of the best fantasy players of, of last year. He can do that with with Mike Gasicki. But Miami's going to draft a rookie, and at what point do they pull the plug on Ryan Fitzpatrick? And now your your outlooks of Gasicki being that low end tight end one, it it takes a really big shot at the probability. I'm going to say they pull the plug on the week that he throws four interceptions. <laughs> so oh, that Fitzpatrick, week, week so three. Who knows? Week, who knows? I do agree that there's just not a lot of. There's not going to be an, a lot of competition for Gasicki for targets. Even though we're here, we're now before free agency. The Dolphins are a team that's going, you know, they have a, a, a sickening amount of draft picks. A gus sickening? A gus sickening amount. And those are players that are going to have to come to fruition, mature, develop. I don't think they're going to spend a ton in free agency on this kind of transitional year where there will be a quarterback transition taking place most likely. So ultimately... The opportunity, the window for Gesicki right now with Chan Gailey, with this news, with what we saw last year, I'll, I'll go ahead and agree on the, the trending assessment. You guys want to do a little mailbag before we shut this thing down? Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Mailbag. Mailbag. All right, if you have a question, you can send us, well, send it to us. Send it to us right now. 302-464-TFFB. Well, if, if you send it to us right now, it won't be on this show. Well, who's right now are you talking about, Mike? Because my right now is different than their right now. And you, I'm talking about their right now. Your right now. If you send your right now to our right now, it will not be on this I'm gonna show. I'm going to say either right now. Either right now won't get on this episode. Whether when it's will Andy's right now? now or their right now, it's just it's impossible. But, we, but we're going to do more shows, right? Next episode, you'll definitely be on. Totally. 302-464-TFFB. <laughs> TheFantasyFootballers.com, click the Submit a Question button. Make sure you don't click Submit a Question now. Mm. So do Submit a Question later. That's a different button. Yes. Facebook question <laughs> from Paul Maris. James, what's Damian Williams' trade value in a dynasty? Oof. I feel like this question is, is like a bad echo. Like I hear this question yes. on schedule once every three days because right. nobody – And we also heard it last off season. That's right. That's that's that, a good point. That's why you're 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 feeling deja vu, is is exactly what you're feeling, because we we've talked about it a little bit. Damian Williams could enter next year as the starting running back for Kansas City, and as you saw in the playoff run, when he's healthy and that offense is going, Damian Williams is a, is an absolute fantasy stud when he's starting for Kansas City. Let me ask you. But he might be replaced in the draft. Let I me ask don't you an know. interesting question. All right. 2020 late round second. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, 2020 late second round pick. Yeah, for second, Damian Williams. Second round rookie pick. Um, I think I would take that. Now, I know I'm the anti Damian Williams uh, I yes, would take be that. believer here, but. You the, would take the pick? I would. The reality is, I think the Kansas City Chiefs draft a good running back in this year's draft. They went out and tried to they tried to get someone great. They went out and got LaShawn McCoy and that, they tried to get some depth. Sure, I think they hoped that they would get shady, reunited with Andy Reid and that they could have something special. They saw quickly like, "Ah, he's lost. Right. He's not the guy." But the point is he's gone. Like Shady's not the guy. They know that now. There's no other backups there. I think even if they loved even if they love Damian Williams, they have to go out and get some other competent, good running backs, and you usually do that through the draft. If they do and find a really good running back, I think it's danger 
to Damian Williams. Yes, it is very dangerous. I will remind us and, and everyone listening, you can't just automatically say, well, look at Kareem Hunt. Because if you remember the actual timeline, when, when they took Kareem Hunt in the third round. They didn't want to play him that quick. Spencer Ware was still the starting running back. Yeah, that was he, just good timing. S- Spencer Ware went down to a season-long injury, and then Kareem Hunt was was awesome and, and took the job. So let's say they, they take a player in the third round, and you could get a great running back in the third round this year. A third rounder well, alone does not scare me tremendously for Damien. So if a, a top two pick, though? First or second rounder? Oh, that? that'd scare the heck out of me. Okay. Yeah, that guy's getting in there. Okay. Uh, but the reason I say it doesn't scare me tremendously is just like what you're saying. It's Andy Reid didn't show that kind of gusto with a Darwin Thompson this year. Right. And it. I think the reason this question is so difficult or asked so often is because the consequences are great. They're, yes. They're not small. Like if Damian is the guy – Oh, my gosh, I feel like last offseason. <laughs> if Damien's the guy, there's nobody arguing that it's valuable to right. be the guy on the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. If you want to trade him, you go to whoever won the championship or whoever lost in the championship game. Say, hey, you, I'll, I'll trade you Damien Williams and try and get – Find your Chiefs fan. Try and get their late first round pick or something. Find your Chiefs fan. I think yeah, that's that will work too. Nobody wants to celebrate their Super Bowl – Quite like trading for some of their own players. Mike, would you take a late second round pick for Damian? I, I once again, it's the context of my team. If I'm rebuilding, then yeah, I would. Darius Geis or Damian in a dynasty league? Damian Geis. I think I'm leading Geis. <laughs> you guys are crazy. I, and it, don't I think? Uh, look, he's proven it. If Damian Williams has the role, he's going to be very good There's for fantasy. There's a chance both those players have zero relevant fantasy games the rest of their career starting now. Yes. That, that's that's the kind of trade I like to be a part of. <laughs> that's not an outlandish <laughs> statement. No. Playoff seedings question from Chris in a place in Maryland. <laughs> I Jamsville? You got jammed. Oh, I right. Jamsville. How do you guys feel about the top seeds? This this is not a real place. Choosing their fantasy opponents in the first round. I love it. I do too. I think it's good because you want to know what it avoids. It avoids that Them last not choosing it. <laughs> no, but you know the last week when you're looking at your playoff matchups and you're thinking, man, I actually like my matchup better if I lose this week. You know, we've all been there before. When you're heading you like into your, the playoffs, you like your seating. You're I, saying, I, yeah, like you, you, you take a look at the seating and you go, oh man, I, I think if I lose this week, I would rather play Josh than Brooks or whatever. And and so this takes that out. You know, the higher seeds they choose their opponent. I think that's kind of fun and cool. I definitely don't think leagues need to change over to it immediately. But I'm just saying, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, I think that's my answer, too. I don't have a problem with it if your league wants to do it. Non-traditional, interesting. Mike, do we have any word on whether I Jamsville is... Apparently, it's real. Oh, man, the music there's got to be so hot. You might say it's jamming. Jamming. It's like, oh, a Jamesville here. Is there a U Jamsville? Like, I Jamsville, U Jamsville? They're that's, actually rivals. Yeah, they They're right next to each other. Very heated against one another. Okay. This is good to know. All, all really good information. I'll skip this one that says, how would you rate Darius Geis' dynasty value unless you guys want to add to the previous discussion? Uh, slightly above apparently, Damian Williams. Apparently it's better than Damian Williams' value, I which, feel is, like, which is it's ridiculous. Equal. I feel like if Mike doesn't have a good thing to say about Darius Geis right there, that says something. Exactly. Because Mike would be finding a way – because not only do – I think we all have genuine compassion over his injury situation. Yes. But, like, Mike has – he's been Geis' guy for a while. I was Stallone at the beginning of Cliffhanger, and the lady that he's trying to hold on to, that was me holding on to Darius Geis' oh, dynasty no. value. Oh, no. And then the, the clip breaks. That doesn't end well. And the glove slips off, and he tumbles down into a cavern of death. <laughs> oh, man. I would have figuratively. I, I want him to be good. I would have preferred an Ace Ventura two reference there, Mike. But I will accept the cliffhanger reference. <laughs> Willing to accept it. All right, let's go ahead and look at one more here. <laughs> Facebook question from Sarge D. 
Best trade shenanigans in order to get your trade approved. Well, well, well. You asked this question. Approved by like the league or approved yeah. by the trade partner? Oh, interesting. Because I, I, I thought you meant the league, and I was going to just transition that into like, please don't allow vetoes in your league speech. Yes. Oh, yeah, we can go there. We should do both because I think, Mike, that you're right in what the question is, wanting to get it accepted, I think, by the other person. But in general, remove your trade deadline, your, your whole timer, the 24-hour uh, period where you've all got to vote on whether a trade should go through. Just – if you're in a league with good people, well, let trades be instant. Trades are instant, And yeah. then if there's a real problem, you can undo one. But a real problem means known provable collusion, not lopsided. Right. Uh, now on to the actual question. Which is, how, how do you trick someone into accepting your bad trade? <laughs> well, is I that know. the actual yeah. question? Yeah, yes, if the, we're implying we're using shenanigans. Uh, look, I know Andy's... Andy's uh, had done this forever, and he's worked. This is a shenanigan that's always worked. He just keeps throwing in more. He just keeps throwing in more garbage well, because eventually, <laughs> when it's like, when it, eventually, when it's like, well, I'm getting 16 <laughs> players and 22 he, picks. He does. He grabs he just, the garbage can. He, and out comes like a used tissue and apple core. And you want to know what they say? They say, "No, I'm not taking your garbage can." He goes, "Okay." And then he goes, he leaves the neighborhood. He comes back with the garbage <laughs> truck. He backs that thing up to the house. He dumps it in your lawn and says, say no to this. And they're like, well, that's a lot. What if I I'm include a to, bag of dog poop? I am willing to overwhelm. <laughs> yes. The key to any good trade with discussion. With stench. With stench with of stinky garbage. Some is stench, but I will say this. I've been burned before, and sometimes it's not with stench. Sometimes it's I'm willing to pay more. Because that transaction means more to me than it does to right. you to get that one player to lose these other assets, to open up a, uh, a pickup spot for the waiver wire. I will say this, though. The best shenanigan to getting a trade approved is to get that person dialoguing about the offer that you sent. It sounds stupid. But if you get somebody to give you a rational reason, it's this is, the, this is tomfoolery at its best. Force a rational reason why they're saying no to your initial offer and then overcome it mm. with the next offer. With the garbage. Because sometimes that's the redund that's the kind of like uh, situation you need where get them to tell you why they're saying no so that you can either break them logically when they say no to overcoming it or they say yes. Yeah, the most important part of negotiation is keeping communication alive right. so it, it really is all about the dialogue sending them chocolates mm. that could work sending them photos Whoa. of the players that yes I, I prefer to send shirtless photos oh, i do if, send yeah. some highlight videos of the players i'm offering them i've done that before just for fun Whoops, how did this get here wow look at these moves <laughs> just get that dialogue going get it going can't Are, believe I'm going to trade this guy. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. He just, oh, that's my favorite line. <laughs> if I'm trading a guy that I want the other person to know is amazing, <laughs> I always go with this one. Here's one for you. It's not a really good roster fit for my team. Oh, oh he's, yeah. very he's nice. the best player in the NFL. But just the way that I, I'm looking to balance over here, he would fit so good on your that's team. That's code for I'm going to cut this player and in two days no, if no one trades no. for them. And here's no. here's what you do. You always build up the guys that you are giving. Never, ever tear down the guys that you're trying to trade for. That right. one, the owners see through. They're like, what? Yeah. Well, well, then why would you trade for this guy? For Don't be like, well, his knee injury might not come back. That's dumb. Yeah, if I'm trying to trade Mike Damian Williams, right? I would go with a line like this. I'd say, Look, Mike, look, I, I know the potential that Damian Williams has to kind of be a top five guy the rest of the way here, but I my team right now, I'm trying to get a win real quick. I don't have time to wait for that. You seem like your roster could handle that kind of upside. Perfect. Here's Darius Geis. <laughs> oh, <laughs> cha-ching. Fair trade. Perfect trade. All right, that does it for today's episode of the show. Again, check out ultimatedraftkit.com. Get that pre-order bundle. That special deal before March 1st. couple days left. And we'll be back here on Thursday with a new CBA. Right? Hopefully. Right? See you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com.
and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And a reminder, Foot Clan Simply Safe is everything you need in a home security system. You'll have an army of highly trained security experts ready to dispatch police to your home at a moment's notice 24-7, and you can set the system up yourself. Check it out today at simplisafe.com slash footballers. Get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial at simplisafe.com slash footballers.